After a back and forth first half, what was the difference there, breaking it open in the third quarter? Um, our offense. And so, you know, defense gets you in the door. You have to play it. You have to be great at it. You have to have effort. Um, but I felt like our spacing let us down. I felt like our shot selection let us down early. They got some transition opportunities. And, you know, when they're allowed to get out and transition, it's hard, harder to stop them in the half court. And so credit to our defense for continuing to just play regardless of our offensive outcome. And then once we fix our spacing and our intentionality on offense, that's kind of when it broke through. The, the defense on Embiid seemed to be, you know, you're throwing a bunch of different looks. You're throwing, you know, late Tatum late at him. Horford was great on him. Just, just overall, what did you see in the, the defensive effort just keeping him in check? Yeah, just uh, open-minded and connectivity. And so when you do something for a long time and you don't, you're not faced with, um, you know, a desperation, adjustments are hard to make. And credit to our guys when we were down 3-2, we made an adjustment, but it opened up their minds. It opened up the connectivity to be able to do a bunch of different stuff, whether it was doubling from different locations, whether it was uh, going small on Embiid and then switching the matchup in the middle of possession, whether it was the rotations that we made. And so credit to our guys for uh, just being open-minded, being connected, and you can't guard those guys one way. You've got to do different things. And so with their effort and um, communication, we were allowed to do that. Joe, uh, Jason started off a little bit better than last game. What did you see from him coming into this game? And where did you see like that? Where were those moments throughout the game where you kind of see the fire come out of him? Uh, again, like to me, he didn't play much different um, in my standard the last three games because he was playing both ends of the floor. He was, in, he was active on defense. He was physical. He was rebounding. He was communicating. Um, and I just think when you do that game after game, you'll get into a little bit of a better rhythm. And so um, I just saw a well-balanced game to where uh, he was competing on a defensive end and, you know, he was making the right play on offense and he made shots. And how have you seen him evolve over the years where he, when the game isn't going to him in one way, he's able to find another way to approach it? Like they're stopping the rim, he finds another way to get around and beat, and he's able to just kind of continuously problem solve throughout a game. I mean, that, that's the word is he's learned how to problem solve. So he can recognize matchups, coverages, uh, he can anticipate the next coverage, he can see the spacing, uh, he can put guys where they are and make the right play. And so that to me is the evolution of players is can they problem solve over and over again? And, you know, you know he's done that. Joe, uh, how much did you appreciate the fact that Jason was able to stay the course with what he went through? last game and then just really do something special here in a, in a game seven? Uh, yeah, him and the whole team. And so you always come into a series with the expectation of how it's supposed to go. And that's just not how the playoffs are. Um, one game, one play can change the course of a series, can change the course of a couple games. And so uh, he did it personally and our team did it to where we just handled the ebbs and flows of a series, never got too emotionally high or too emotionally low. We had tough, you know, rough patches, but um, we were able to keep, you know, our emotional togetherness intact, which I think is important during the playoffs. And a simple question, how good does it feel to move on a as a team to the Eastern Conference Finals? Feels good. Joe, uh, to your left. Aside from the obvious, which is game prep, look at tape and so forth, what are you personally going to do over the next 12 to 24 hours personally to commemorate what happened today? Uh, I'm going to go home and have a glass of wine and start watching film on Miami, and then we'll meet as a staff tomorrow at 10. Any special people you'll be talking to on the phone, text, phone calls, and whatnot? Uh, just the same people that I talk to, my friends on a daily basis, my wife, my kids, my mother-in-law's here. So just keep it as normal as you can. Thank you. Yeah. What kind of wine, Joe? What kind of wine? Uh, Italian red. Okay, I like it. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, the, did you hear any of the, you know, Woj had a report coming into the game on the um, call of disparity over the last game. Doc had some comments coming into it, and there were, looked like a few frustrating calls early. Did you guys hear about that at all, or did you just kind of tune that out? Um, I mean, I saw it, yeah. I don't think, I honestly, we, we both shot seven free throws in the first half, so I really don't think it was that big of a deal. I think um, because of the reports or whatever the case may be, it seems louder it's like you know it's like uh you see the report you go out in the game they make three calls and it's like oh see yeah and that just wasn't the case i think the free throw was, was the same at, at the half and so um you know, i thought it was a well-officiated game and al on joel 
he had to do a bunch of different coverages throughout the series. How did you just sort of see his defense on Joel evolve and you know, drive you guys through the series? Uh, I mean, Al is one of our defensive anchors, him and Smart for sure. And so when, when he uh, plays with the type of physicality to where um, – he knows he can guard one on one because of the the team and the people he has around him, and so because of that, he was able to be a little bit freer and physical. And uh, whether it was Rob, whether it was Smart, whether it was Jalen, Jason, Derek, Malcolm, Grant, whoever was in the game, because of their open mindedness and their connectivity, he was allowed to just be more aggressive. And so you have to guard him as a team. The uh, in the second quarter, they there was a foul on Harden, and you went out to about half court to call a timeout. And then uh, it didn't look like you were telling you guys that you love them in that huddle. Oh, well, it can look a lot of different ways. <laughs> <laughs> what were you trying to pull out of them in that moment? Uh, obviously, it was a pretty pivotal one. Right there. Yeah, I just build an awareness to how the game's going. I think in a game like that, it can be the guys are so focused on playing hard because they want to win that you lose sight of, you know, how the, the reality sometimes because they just, you know, our guys have such the right intention. So just building an awareness of, like, hey, here's really how the game's going. Uh, we got to shift it. You know, we got to shift the momentum. We have to get it back. Um, and the guys did that. And what did you think you needed to shift at that moment? Uh, again, like our offensive intentionality. And in moments like that, it's easy to let your defense slip. And so it's like, hey, we got to continue our defense, and then we got to do this on the offensive end and, and regain the, the management of the game. Hey, Joe. The simple way to put what Jason did today is historic. He scored the most points ever in a game seven. You mentioned it earlier you saw problem solving from him, but how would you describe what we saw Jason do on the floor today? Uh, just, you know, a guy that doesn't get too high or too low, takes the game the way it comes, and he has ultimate trust in himself and in his teammates. And, you know, one of the biggest things I've always said is people talk about him, the player, but the person, who he is, is a reflection of how he plays. And so he's very even keel. He has a trust and a loyalty and a character about him. And, um, you know, when you play like that and, and live like that, I think it works out for you. And so you see it in his game, and uh, I'm not surprised by it at all. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll have the humility to just keep going, which I think is key. And what did you learn about your team today? I mean, I've been around them for three years. And so um, I just saw it, again, to the standpoint of at the most critical moments, they don't overreact, they trust each other, they stay together, and they execute. And to me... One word to describe the series is ownership. They took ownership. They took ownership of, of um, what was going well, what wasn't. They took ownership of communication. They took ownership of the um, you know, game plans at times, you know, because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are out there playing and competing. And so if they have a feel, if they have something that they think is going to make them play harder and play together, you have to trust them and go with that. And so they do that, and you know, that's what they show. Joe. I'm sure everybody's been in Tatum's ear over the last 48 hours telling him it's a game seven, you got to be great. This is what legacies are built on. What have you told him in the last 48 hours? How do you approach that situation where he already probably puts enough pressure on himself and then all the outside forces? I told him I loved him, and I told him when the game starts, don't listen to people and try to get out on a good start scoring. You're not defined by scoring in my book, and that's most important is don't let your identity be caught up in what others say about you. Your identity is in who you are as a person, and how well you can dominate the game in areas that are, you know, don't get all the attention. And I thought I saw that from him tonight. And when you do that, you get, you know, moments like that. And so um, when he plays a well-rounded game, our team is different. And uh, credit to him for buying into that. He's and this is sixth year, but he's 25. I mean, how tough is that for him? Do you have to stress that to him uh, in terms of just keeping focus and not letting – Everybody no, I mean, he's got great people around him. I don't have to stress it. I just have to affirm it. That's all. Joe, uh, only eight turnovers tonight, and that's been kind of a theme for the Celtics team, win by the turnover, die by the turnover. How did you manage to, you know, rein things in in the second half where ball control was really tight for the Celtics? Spacing. Um, when you're spaced, we have, a, we have, you know, between Smart, Malcolm, Derek, Jalen, Jason, our guards, when we're spaced, um, we have enough skill that we can usually make the right play. And credit to them, they did that. Yeah. Joe, did you get any sense during the series or even today that Jason approached it as him against Joel? You know, they were the MVP chance after he hit one of the threes in the third quarter. He seemed not to mind them very much. Did, did you get and, – and did you view that as a good thing or a bad thing if he did look at it that way? Uh, I, no. No, I didn't. Um, I thought he did – 
um, and will do whatever it takes to win. Um, so, again, hey, I'm happy for him. Credit to him. Like you said, he had an historic night. But uh, tonight it's about what he did, and it's about our team and about what they did. As uh, That locker room, like I said, is one of the best locker rooms I've been a part of. Um, the theme of the series was ownership. It was connectivity. It was love. It was togetherness, and those guys did it uh, together. And uh, that's why we have a chance. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.